Today we will start a chapter based on microorganisms that is chapter 2 of your science book microorganisms friend and foe students some living organisms such as plants animals and humans are large enough to be seen with the naked eyes but some living organisms are so small that we need a powerful lens or a microscope to see them. These are called microorganisms or microbes. Students, you all know that the very small organisms which cannot be seen through unaided eyes or naked eyes are called microorganisms. These organisms are found everywhere. Some of the microorganisms are very useful to us and some are harmful to us. Habitat of microorganisms Microorganisms are found everywhere around us. They are found in air, water, soil, bodies of humans, animals and plants. Classification of microorganisms Microorganisms are classified into four major groups. These are bacteria, fungi, protozoa, algae. Along with these groups, there exists a group of organisms called viruses, which are considered to be at the borderline of living and non living. Let's know about these microorganisms. Bacteria. Bacteria are very small unicellular microorganisms. Unicellular means they are made up of single or one cell. They have cell wall but do not have an organized nucleus and other structures. It means their nuclear material is scattered in cytoplasm due to lack of nuclear membrane. Bacteria live in colonies means they do not live alone. They live together or in groups and are found in large numbers everywhere in air, water, soil, on every surface around us and on our bodies and even inside our bodies. Some bacteria are autotrophs. Autotrophs means they prepare their own food and some are heterotrophs means they get food from others. Bacteria are larger than viruses but are still very small. Unlike viruses, bacteria feed, move, respire as well as reproduce on their own. There are mainly three groups of bacteria on the basis of their shapes. Spherical or circular, rod shaped or cylindrical and spiral or curved shaped. Apart from these, some are of other shape too. Lactobacillus, Streptococcus and Rhizobium bacteria are some common examples of bacteria. Have you ever seen dirty green patches on a stale slice of bread? Do you know? These are actually a kind of microorganisms. It is commonly called the bread mold. It belongs to a group of microorganisms called the fungi. Fungi are a large group of organisms which do not have chlorophyll and hence cannot prepare their food. Some fungi look like plants but they cannot make their own food like the plants do. Fungi need moist and warm conditions to grow. Most of the fungi are saprophytes which feed on dead things like remains of dead plants and animals. Some of the fungi are parasites. They feed on living things and cause diseases. Some of the examples of fungi are rhizopus that is bread mold, penicillium and aspergillus. The fungi like yeast and molds are very small in size and can be seen clearly only with the microscope. 
Thus, yeast and molds are the fungi which can be considered to be microorganisms. The fungi such as mushrooms, toadstools and puffballs are bigger in size. Some of the human diseases caused by the fungi are ringworm and athlete's foot. Protozoa are unicellular microorganisms. They can move from place to place. They vary in shape and form from very simple to complex structures. Some protozoa live in fresh or salty water and some live in soil. The organisms can be sedentary or capable of locomotion. They move with the help of cilia, flagella and pseudopodia. Amoeba, paramecium and plasmodium are examples of protozoa. Let's know about amoeba. Amoeba is the simplest unicellular organism. It lives in fresh water and has no definite shape. Locomotion occurs with the help of finger-like structures called pseudopodia. Amoeba feeds on tiny parts of plants like algae. The pseudopodia surrounds the food particles and takes it inside. Paramecium It is slipper-shaped freshwater protozoa. Its body covered by structure called cilia which help in locomotion and catching prey. Let's know about plasmodium. It causes malaria in human beings. It lives as parasite into two hosts in RBC and in liver of man and in saliva and stomach of female Anopheles mosquito. Students, have you seen green patches or carpet-like structure in pond or stagnant water or on the moist wall or floor? These are nothing but a diverse group of microorganisms called algae. Algae is a large group of simple plant-like organisms. They contain chlorophyll and produce food by photosynthesis just like plants. Algae, however, differ from plants because they do not have proper roots, stem and leaves. Some of the examples of algae are Chlamydomonas, Spirogyra, blue-green algae like diatoms and seaweeds. Only some of the algae are unicellular. Most of the algae are multicellular. For example, Chlamydomonas and diatoms are single-celled algae, whereas blue-green algae and Spirogyra are multicellular algae. The blue-green algae have the ability to fix nitrogen gas of atmosphere. Viruses are the smallest microorganisms which can develop only inside the cells of host organisms which may be an animal, plant or bacterium. Viruses are much smaller than bacteria and they do not show most of the characteristics of living things. For example, they do not respire, they do not feed, grow, excrete or move on their own. They just reproduce. Viruses are able to reproduce if they enter a living cell. It means virus can reproduce and multiply only inside the cells of other organisms such as animal cells, plant cells or bacterial cells. Thus, as long as viruses are outside the living cells, they behave as non-living things. But as soon as the viruses enter the living cells of the other organisms, they start behaving as living things by carrying out the process of reproduction. Due to this reason, viruses are said to lie on the borderline dividing the living things from non-living things. Viruses infect cells and use components of host cell to make copies of themselves. Often, they kill or damage the host cell in process and cause damage to host organism.